Hey guys, this is Coach for Colors, and we are about to begin Math 1 finally. Uh, what we're going to do, the very first thing in Math 1, is we're going to talk about function families. And specifically, we're going to talk about a few parent functions. And these parent functions are ones that you need to notice and understand their shape, but also their relationship between the domain and the range. Now, if you have a graphic organizer handy, you'll see that the two words domain and range are at the top and they're vocabulary terms. The domain is actually the x values that we use, or the input values and the range are the output values or the y values that we, we get out of the function. Okay. The EQ that we're going to cover in this unit is how do you explore and interpret the characteristics of functions while focusing on function notation and logic languages. Well right now we're focusing on the characteristics of functions. How they look, how, things, um, how the domain values are affected to produce the range values. Okay. Visually as well as algebraically. Let's get started. Let's start with a simple parent function. We're going to start with the most elementary one, and that's y equals x. You should know that this has a power of 1, so this is going to be a linear equation. Okay, so on your graphic organizer where it says the shape of the graph and description, put that it is a linear equation. It's going to create a line. All right? All right? On your graphic organizer also, I need you to create this t-chart and put these values on your t-chart. We're going to start with negative 10 and you just plug negative 10 for x and it's really simple there's nothing to solve because it's already solved for you y is going to equal negative 10 so this has the relationship that whatever you put in for x guess what y is going to be exactly the same thing so plug in a negative 10 for your domain get out a negative 10 for your range okay guys now is the time of the video where we want to pause the video so I can give you a little bit of time for you to complete the t-chart for y equals x. So pause the video now, fill in your t-chart for y equals x, play the video again, and we'll check our answers. Okay, let's check our answers for y equals x. See if what you have for the t-chart matches mine. All right, this is the completed t-chart. What you should find is that no matter what you put in for x or the domain, you should get exactly the same thing out for y. So negative 10, 10, negative 5, 5, 0, 0, 2, 2, 6, 6, and 12, 12. Very easy. Okay, these are also ordered pairs. So now we have the ordered pairs for the t-chart from the t-chart. So now we're going to plot those on our graph. So at this time, I want to give you a little bit of time. Pause the video and plot the ordered pairs on the graph. Okay, you should apply the points for y equals x on your graph and hopefully got out your straight edge because it is a linear equation and does create a straight line. These are the points that we have found using our t-chart and they do create a straight line. It is a linear equation. What, it, what you should notice for y equals x is that it, it splits the first quadrant and the third quadrant directly in half because the slope is 1 and with a slope of one that means you're rising one and running one at the same time so you're going up and, and over the same distance and every, at every point so very simple graph y equals x let's move on to the next one second parent function is y equals x squared same as y equals x is ever we're changing it to a power of two let's see how it affects the graph okay new t chart to go ahead and set that up with new input values or new domain values Let's do the first one together. The first domain value is negative 4. Now we're going to square negative 4. Be careful. You're not just squaring the 4, you're squaring the negative 4. So it's, it's like a package. So it will be in this case negative 4 times negative 4, which is going to be a positive 16. Negative times a negative is a positive. Put in a negative 4, get out a 16. Okay? Now's the time where you pause the video and complete the t chart for y equals x squared. Go ahead. Okay, guys, you got your t-chart finished for y equals uh, x squared. Let's take a look and see if you got the same answers I did. All right, check what check to see if you got the same thing. I plug in a negative four, get out of sixteen. We did that one together. Negative two, get out of four. Zero, get out of zero. Put in a two, get out of four. Put in a four, get out of sixteen. What you should notice is that every range value here is positive, and the reason for that is that you're squaring. And when you square a negative, again, a negative times a negative is a positive, and then a positive times a positive is also a positive. So it does not matter if you plug in a positive or a negative x value, you will always get out a positive y value. Okay, these are ordered pairs. 
Now's the time for you to pause the video and plot the order pairs to see what kind of graph you should get. Okay, you got your points plotted for y equals x squared. Let's uh, take a look at the graph. It's definitely not linear this time, but instead it makes a U shape. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I had a phone call to take. But what I, as I was saying, the graph should be in the shape of a U. Okay, now notice the domain values. This is the x axis here, which represents the domain values. If the domain values are positive, the y values are also positive. If the domain values are negative, the y values are also positive. So there are no range values that are in the negative section down here. Everything's positive. Okay, this is a quadratic. You need to make sure you put that on your uh, graphic organizer, and you also need to put that it is in the shape of a U. All right, the next parent function is a cubic. Okay, y equals x to the third power. Same deal. Create your t-chart. Put in these domain values. Uh, let's do the first one together. Negative 3. We're going to plug in negative 3 cubed. Now this one's a little bit tricky. Uh, negative 3 cubed means you're multiplying negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Well in this case you are going to get a negative out. And the reasoning is this. If you multiply those three numbers together, multiply the first two together, you get negative 3 times negative 3 which is neg uh, excuse me, positive 9. And then you take the positive 9 and multiply it times a negative 3, you get a negative 27 out. Three negatives, you're going to get a negative out. Okay, so now's the time on the video. Pause the video, complete the t-chart just like we did before. Okay, guys, let's check your, check your t-chart values for y equals x cubed. Here's what you should have. Make sure you show all your work here. All right, plug in negative 3, get out negative 27. Plug in negative 2, get out of negative 8. Plug in negative 1, get out of negative 1. Plug in 0, get out of 0. Plug in 1, get out of 1. Plug in 2, get out of 8. Plug in 3, get out of 27. Now your graph may not have room for 27 and negative 27 for y values, but you should still have uh, room for the other five points there. So now it's the time I want you to take this information, these order pairs, and I want you to graph them on your coordinate plane. So pause the video now and plot y equals x cubed. Okay guys, so you got your points plotted on your coordinate plane. Let's take a look to see if what you have matches what I have. Okay guys, here's the graph for uh, y equals x cubed. I zoomed out on my graph a little bit so I can plot the, the positive 27 and the negative 27 that I received from the t-chart. The so my graph is going to be a little bit uh, different scale than yours. But what you should see here is you should see that it, it does have kind of a curve to it. Uh, and we describe this curve, so put this on your teach, uh, put it on your graphic organizer. We describe this curve to be an end curve. Okay? Now it's not really noticeable here because this is the parent function, but if we adjust and get different cubics, you can have a really noticeable end that shows up on the, uh, on the graph there. So a cubic, which is something to the third power, creates an end shape. Okay guys, my video ran over 10 minutes, so I had to cut it into two parts. So now we have completed the first page of the graphic organizer, y equals x, y equals x squared, and y equals x cubed. Now you need to go to the second video to watch the uh, last portion to graph y equals the square root of x and also y equals absolute value. So go ahead and click on the next video there.